Well, hello, and uh, welcome back to another Daily Dose. So on this one here, I, I'd like to continue on a prior image that was painted in one of the prior tutorials, <clears throat> or something similar, like, for instance, the one where we just had a single orange. And then we also uh, put a wood frame around it. That was done, perhaps that was seen in another tutorial. So I'm not going to go into that too much. But what I want to do now is take it from there even further and hang it up on a wall and make it look like it's a little bit crooked and there is some lighting and shading and other stuff there to make it look somewhat realistic. <clears throat> and uh, so let's have a look at a couple of things. First of all, we need more space around it, right? Because the picture is basically, if we click it here at 100%, uh, percent, it's filling the image or the window, um, <clears throat> but there's no room around it to give it that background wall. So one thing you can do, you can go to image and uh, find the resize, image size, not resample, but image size, click on that. And just give it some space around it. <clears throat> let's say, for instance, if you have 1024 pixels on the width, let's make it 1600. And uh, a good amount for the height might be 1280. Or just 1200, why not? Right, we've got some nice margins, some space around it. And you can zoom out here a little bit and see, indeed, now we have some white space around it. Now, one thing we may want to do also is tilt it a little bit. This picture is going to look somewhat realistic, so in the real world, it's not a perfect horizontal. It's a little bit tilted. So we need to do a little transformation there, a little rotation. We could do that with a filter. We could also pick it up as a brush, turn the brush, stamp it back down. So there's a couple of other ways to do it. Let's go here with the transform and simply rotate it perhaps one notch. Uh, maybe a little bit more. There. <coughs> and don't worry about the white stuff here. Actually, if you do worry about that, let's undo this. And understand that one thing you can do is tile it. So when you rotate it, like so, but you then also tile it, click here, it will tile the white to the next neighboring white and it will fill it for you. So a little side effect here. And of course another way would be to simply crop it or to paint the black uh, with white and you know fix it basically. But here we have a nice uh, transformed picture. It could probably be done better. Perhaps if you used the, uh, the brush approach it might be a better rotation algorithm or, or finer, better quality. Here we're going for speed so it doesn't matter so much. <coughs> now. One thing we'll do is we'll probably do some work on the background around it that will have some sort of a brick wall. And there's also going to be some work we do on the picture itself with some lighting and texturing and so on. To separate the two, perhaps to bring the one in the background, like the brick wall, a little bit out of focus, whereas we bring it into nice, crisp, sharp appearance in the front on the picture. You know, we kind of simulate that way that we actually take a camera, a picture, and we focus on the frame, but the wall is a little bit further back. To do that, uh, it's a good idea to have it either on separate layers or uh, at least a selection mask or all of the above. So one thing I'd like to do here is to go to the magic wand and click here <clears throat> and we'll get the, the marching ants to show us that we have a selection here that indicates the outline is selected. So let's go to the selection and store that. We'll probably use this quite a bit. We'll, for instance, invert it if we want this picture to be a little bit darker. So let's replace the selection right there and go to a filter such as the value filter right and make it a little bit darker <clears throat> or perhaps brighter or more contrast change to gamma and so on right, I'm actually going to undo that and perhaps give it instead a little bit of a tint I'm going to adjust the color and to do that maybe a little bit more reddishness to that less of the green and blue something like that and the idea is that we basically we're showing that there is a, a spotlight somewhere in the upper left corner that's hitting it and that spotlight has a little bit of a pink or yellowish orange tint. Alright, now let's go back, let's uh, replace or invert the alpha and go there. So we need to uh, put some brick texture in the background there. There's a couple ways to do that. <clears throat> One fairly quick way is with the fill settings. You click on that and if you're not on the fill tool you can click that. I guess if you use the magic wand it's a very similar tool so you see the similar options there but when you're on the fill tool you see uh, paper, fill settings, and gradients. <clears throat> On the fill settings, you know, by default it's doing a plain color fill. So if you have the primary color black, let's say we change that to a light blue, primary color black uh, is blue, uh, plain color fill will just do that. Well, <clears throat> instead you could do a pattern fill, but we don't have a pattern quite yet. By default it will look for a pattern in the custom brush. So you can go to the patterns here and you can go and look for patterns uh, such as these are by the way these are tileable textures so you can take the, the brick wall right and make that the pattern to be replicated when you click on here 
you get this. Now, it may not be the size you want. You may want to make this a little bit bigger. So you're going to need to work on probably the brush. I suppose this is using the brush. So if you take the resample here, let's see if that works. Let's double up on size. Right. And go and erase the uh, selection there and click here. And that looks like it's bigger already. <clears throat> All right. So if you need it really a lot bigger, one thing you could do is go to the brush and store it and then manage it and quickly resize it to double size and so on and you know, keep doing that a few times until you got it to the size you want. So I'm going to go just uh, erase here one more time and we got a brick wall that's decent in size but it's flat. It doesn't seem to have much uh, depth to it. So one thing we'll do here is we'll take a look at the convolution filter because that's usually where you see the color embossing. All right, so that's one technique you can use to give it a little bit more depth. Still not perfect. And so, and, and then on top of that, we get this little bit of an edge showing here. So that's not something we need. Let's go and in fact, let's go do this here. On the brush we can currently have, let's store that <clears throat> just in case we need to get back to that. But one thing we want to do is turn it, uh, make sure it's still seamless. So let's make a seamless brush out of that and keep the original size perhaps increase how much of this thing is uh, overlapping on the edges and okay that. It's in the brush, we can store that again. We have another instance now. Let's go fill it right in here. And now we have a nice seamless appearance without any artifacts on the edges. All right, don't need this one anymore. This one will keep around, you never know. All right, so next thing we need to do is give it a little bit more depth. And one thing that can help there is the paper. The paper texture um, it's something that can basically be used whenever you do certain painting operations, such as painting with a brush or even filling with the fill tool. So with the fill canister, if you say you want to paint with the pattern fill, let me erase this quickly here. Okay, you want to paint with the pattern fill, but you also want to add the paper texture, and that's if you click here, it will add the paper texture to it. Okay, so when you do that, it will apply some paper texture and uh, right now if you click here you see what is your paper texture it's some sort of a stucco pattern that's not the one I want instead I want to use the brush so if I click use brush it will actually use my current uh, tileable or, or seamless texture of the brick pattern as also the paper texture <clears throat> and so let me go undo and click here again and so now this time you could adjust a little bit how much relief you get uh, if you want a negative style. Change the scale. You probably don't want to change the scale of the paper texture because it would disconnect from, uh, you know, from the the other one. So at any rate, you, you get an idea. You, you can start working with that to get a little bit more relief, a little bit more of the paper texture there, and perhaps some embossing. And and probably best is to to use a little bit of both. You know, do some filter-based embossing here as well. Now, if you want to go really far with that, what you want to do is get the light, get the stylized lighting tool. All right, the, the lighting tool here, that's the one where you can throw that light around, move it around the different places. Uh, perhaps not quite that much of that uh, embossed appearance to it. Perhaps uh, have it not that bright or not that close, so bring it up a little bit farther. But that will also add some, some depth to it. And plus you can have the smoothness reduced here or increased so that it makes a little bit more, it gets rid of the very tiny changes and variations on that texture and uh, therefore enhances the appearance of just the, the mortar, right? The, the, big, the big patterns in this brick. So that's another way to use that. Um, let's go perhaps give it a little bit of a color on the light. And again, that color, that light will be my hand on the left, but we can certainly add another light source, make it a bluish perhaps on the side. You know, if for instance you imagine there's a window on the right side of us or behind us, <clears throat> there may be some blue light coming in through that window. So if we click and add another light, we move it over here, we make it kind of bluish, something like so, <clears throat> and uh, keep it far away. But that'll be enough to kind of convey the, the appearance that there is indeed some other light source in the neighborhood here. All right, but the, the goal, the main goal here is of course to have a combination and especially a fairly bright light in the upper left corner. All right, we, by the way, have two layers now because that's how the lighting tool works. Uh, we can merge these together if we don't care to keep those separate anymore. And so next thing we'd like to do is add a little bit of uh, shadow, uh, like a shadow drop. And so while we still have that selection on, what you can do is go to the selection effects and do a drop shadow. 
so when you look at that drop shadow maybe we need to invert it let's see oh, it looks like it's on the inside now so let's re-invert it to the outside nice this all right, let's see how much uh, we need the fuzziness, uh, the opacity, and really we need much more than 10 units here. This is a fairly large image, so 10 pixels is not going to give us much of a shadow. And so therefore, let's give it, uh, I don't know, one more unit. Let's give it 101 and see how far that goes. And the same here, 102 rather. Oh no, so look at that, it's actually on the inside now. All right, so what I'll do is I'll invert it. And at this time, we should see the shadow. There you go. Kind of in the lower right corner. So what I'll do is I give it a lot of fuzziness to spread this shadow. I'll give it less opacity. And uh, that's already starting to look pretty good. Now, there's a couple of other things we can do. Uh, one of them is to kind of leave the lighting in the upper left corner and remove some of it towards the lower right. Okay, so. What I'll do temporarily is get rid of the alpha channel. Now, I, I still need to make sure I keep a copy of it. So let's store the alpha. There you go, minimize it. And then I'll go and uh, clear the alpha there. Okay, so I, I get rid of the alpha channel or the selection mask. And now I'm going to uh, do a little trick here with the circular gradient. We've seen this uh, linear gradient and circular gradient. And uh, you could do this in a couple of ways. The circular gradient, you know, if you paint it on top here, that's not going to be very nice. Uh, first of all, it's dark in the upper left corner where we really need it bright there. So one thing we need to do is undo, U for undo. And then we need to go to uh, perhaps P for playtime with the uh, sweep editor and invert it or reverse it. There you go. So now we have a gradient that goes from bright in the middle and goes dark to the edge. <clears throat> and when you do this, you can go and use the interactive undo to blend it back a little bit to the prior image somewhere in between here. That's already an interesting approach. Or another thing you could do is instead of using it in replace mode, use it in, uh, I don't know, multiply mode for instance. So look for the mode and select multiply and then apply that. And as you apply it, it will show you a bright center spot and kind of darken to the edge. And you can do this a few times. It's multiplicative until you get it. So now if you do it the first time here and then do it again, it's going to replace the prior one. Actually, no, it's going to multiply on top. All right, so what I'll do is say, okay, the light needs to hit around here in the frame of the picture, somewhere around this much. That's one. And then we'll do another one, something like this. Okay, and you know, of course, um, even better is if you, oops, I went too many times undo here. There you go. Even better is if you actually put this on a separate layer. So if, if you add another layer here, and on this one, you can do, uh, instead of the default mode, you could do, I don't know, divide. Uh, you know, experiment with some of these. Soft light. Some of them will do very minute changes, but that may be just exactly what you're looking for. Okay, and then you can do another layer. And do another soft light on that gradually you get the amount of lighting you want, or the contrast. Just that. So hopefully that'll give you some ideas of how you can make this picture a little bit more interesting by actually putting it into another picture, right? This is a picture inside a picture. <laughs> well, I hope you like this uh, quick uh, escapade on the Daily Dose, and um, I uh, hope to see you soon again on another episode.